Welcome back to Dark Stories True Crime. I'm Baby Cheeses, and tonight we will be talking about a woman named Julia Gibson. She also went by the name of Madame Gurkha. She was born Julia Glushkova on the 7th of February 1872 in Russia. She was a single mother of two when she met and then married Henry Gibson, an Australian-born artist and circus performer. The family moved to Australia in 1917. This is where Julia and Henry did separate. In early 1918, Julia started working in the Melbourne's Eastern Arcade, making costumes. She was also operating under the name of Madame Gurkha, a fortune teller. She had a decent amount of clients. This was a very hush-hush job back then, as it was illegal to do this kind of work. In the same arcade was the Australian Wine Saloon. This was owned and run by Colin Campbell Ross and his brothers Stanley and Ronald. Before the brothers purchased the shop, it was known to attract quiet and respectable people, but Colin and his brothers would serve anyone, which meant there was often alcoholics and criminals entering the premises. The other tenants in the arcade were not impressed and resented the men. This included Julia, Madame Gurkha. She could not stand them as she was losing business due to the hooligans he was allowing to enter his saloon. On the 31st of December 1921, 12-year-old Alma Tershki was found in Gun Alley, a laneway off Little Collins Street. She had been sexually assaulted and strangled to death. A reward was offered for the capture of the killer and a number of men were interviewed, Colin Ross being one of them. The police were convinced that he was the culprit for Alma's murder and he was arrested on the 12th of January 1922. Colin did have an alibi. He was at work at the time of the murder, but during the trial, a number of witnesses testified that Colin had confessed the crime to them, one of these being Julia Gibson, aka Madame Gurkha. Colin was sentenced to death as an innocent man. Julia would share the reward money with the other witnesses. Julia became well known after this case and appeared in the newspaper with other headlines, which did damage her reputation and business. She was fined on two charges of having by subtle craft, including palmistry, and imposed upon and deceived by two undercover police women. She was convicted again and fined £20. She also went on to sue the Herald and Weekly Times in 1951 for injury to her character, credit, and reputation as they wrote a column on a house that was for sale and that Julia once lived in. They wrote that the notorious fortune teller Madame Gurkha used to live in the property and that people nearby say the house could tell many tales of strange happenings there years ago. She won the case and received a thousand pounds. Julia told stories of how she worked for the British Secret Services and travelled a fair bit for her missions. She also claimed her previous husband, the father of her two children, went mad and stabbed her. He died in jail while serving his sentence. Some of the things she did tell people about her lifestyle did not match up, so it's not 100% certain how much is accurate or how much of a true fortune teller she actually was. What we do know is that her lies allowed for an innocent man to die for a crime he did not commit. Why would she do this? Because she wanted revenge and just didn't like him. 